The uh, Finance Committee meeting for Monday, October 7th. Please turn your cell phones down. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you read item number one, please? Order appropriation $500 from Spectra Energy Foundation to the City of Brockton Fire Department Spectra Energy Foundation Grant Fund. These grant monies are for the purpose of modernizing its hazardous materials, fire prevention, and code enforcement activities. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Richard C. Francis, Chief of Fire. I did receive communication. Mr. Condon was unable to make it tonight. I don't think this issue will be impacted. We do have a representative of the Chief here. If you could just step up and give us a brief. Deputy Chief Charles Davis, the Fire Prevention Bureau Chief, asked me to uh, take this meeting tonight. Uh, Non-matching grant, $500. They gave us some money last year. We're upgrading our portable computer capabilities. Uh, this gives us a, an iPad-type product that we can use in the field. Uh, Real-time data retrieval, hazmat operations, code enforcement, uh, stuff like that. It's just improving. And it ties us into the state, the department system. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Thank you, Governor. <coughs> Time late. Item number two. Order that the DEP is authorized to issue an out-of-town single family sewer connection to the property located at 351 North Quincy Street in Abington, Mass. Once all surveys and maps are submitted by the applicant, invited Michael Thorson, DPW Commissioner, Lawrence Raleigh, Superintendent of Utilities, John Stone, Superintendent of Sewer, Town of Abington, Mass. Good evening, Commissioner. If I'm not mistaken, I received communication that these people are no longer interested. Is uh, yeah, that's what I was going to come up and say. This is off the table. They have decided to go another way, so this is, uh, this the, is off the table. It's for the purpose uh, of moving this forward, motion to recommend favorably. Second. Uh, actually, why don't we uh, motion to recommend to table? State, I, I remove that motion, motion to table. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to table this item. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Motion is tabled. Table. Item number three. Mr. Chairman, I move to postpone this to the end of the meeting. Second. Motion made and seconded to postpone item three. One more item. One more. Uh, all those in favor? The proponents. Opposed? We'll postpone number three. Item number four. Order that the City Council authorize the acceptance of the donation of a memorial bench for the DW Field Golf Course. This request was presented by Club National on behalf of a deceased member. All costs associated with the memorial bench, including installation, will be incurred by Club National. Invited Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. Jack Kappen, Club National member. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening. Um, this bench would be for um, a member of Club National. His name is Mark Johnson. Um, you've all got a picture of the bench in front of you. Um, it's approximately four feet long. Um, the picture you have is sandalwood, I think is the color. We're going to go with the gray um, because replacement material is easier to get. Um, the bench would be located um, just uh, outside of the 18th green, and this is a project that I hope to continue so that we can get benches throughout the golf course and DW Field Park to all match, be new, and be re renewable. Um, <coughs> the material is, is a uh, composite, you know, plastic material, uh, so it doesn't require painting, won't fade. It should last longer than the wood benches that are out there. Thank you. What would you recommend favorably? Is Mr. Second. Capen here? Is he, would he like to just say a word? Uh, just the Club National accepts all the terms set by the Parks Commission. If you'd like to know anything about Mark Johnson, I'd be surely happy to answer any questions. Or on motion. the motion. On the motion. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for your uh, donation. Mr. Carpet, I have a question. Uh, you said that we're looking. I was over the golf course the other day and I noticed there are a lot of benches broken. And are you. Uh, in the process of asking, like Club National, for donations, and we can put, you know, uh, veterans' names or people's names on them. And is that is that a process that has been just started? Absolutely. He um, okay. so that's what we're going to uh, we're going to try and do is work our way around not only the golf course, but if people would like to donate a bench in DW Field Park, um, then we'd like to have all the benches matched. Yeah, that's a that's a great thing. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Dubois. Hi. I just have a question. Th I think this is a great idea. Thank you guys for, th for thinking about it. So, Mr. Johnson, this is going to be donated in memory of him, is that? Yes. And is his name going to be on the bench? Yes. I think that's great. Okay, that was my only thing, because I think it's wonderful that um, Mr. Zielinski, is that you? <laughs> that's just a picture from the, uh, from the book. 
I'm sorry. Okay, so it would be in honor of Mark Johnson. Yes. Great, that's wonderful. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Mark? Well, Mark uh, was a lifelong city resident, a life member of the Club National. Uh, he was raised in Ward 4 on Summer Street. His family, his father was an ex-police uh, chief. His family is well known amongst the golf community. I think you all know, might know Danny Johnson. He passed away a few years ago. He's got a memorial bench at the Brockton Country Club. Uh, Mark's brother Tommy and his son Tommy Jr. are well-known golfers in the city. And Mark played his whole life up at DW. And uh, he came down with a, a back injury that you know, didn't allow him to play golf anymore, but he still went up to the golf course every weekend to provide some color commentary, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's great. And uh, he would be there, that's why we suggested outside the fence at the 18th green, because he would stay there and watch all our tournaments come in, and it'll bring a smile to a lot of faces to see the bench over there. I think that's great. So Club National used to be the French club. It still is. Okay, so this is, this is a little thing that gets under my jaw, so it's a little different than this. So my grandfather was a member of the French club, and my great-grandfather helped build the French club when he came over here from France. Yet, because I'm a woman, I can't be a member. So I'm hoping that someday you will allow women members so I can be a member of the club that my great-grandfather helped to build in the city. Wow. So that's just my little advocacy on that. Well, but I, I think you have a great club. Thank you. I'm you just a member. I'm not I the president. <laughs> but that's just my vote. And I think this is a wonderful idea. Thank you. Thank you. That's the money. Yes, I was going to ask you a little about Mark. But uh, I want to thank the Club National and Jack for uh, bringing this forward. And as, <clears throat> as you know, uh, Mark worked with me at the gas company for 30 years before he retired. And he's really a great guy. And Michelle, if you want to join my club, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You can come in as a guest for free, you know. Yeah, it's not the point. <laughs> but thank you very much. Motion has been made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? Opposed? Recommended. And thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we will now go back to item number three. Order that DPW is authorized to allow the development referenced at 695 North Main Street to connect to the City of Brockton sewer system. Invited Michael Thorsten, DPW Commissioner Lawrence Raleigh, Superintendent of Utilities. Mr. Chairman? Council Dubois. Great. So um, I placed this on the agenda because most, well, everybody here knows that Ward 6 has a sewer moratorium that was in place prior to me becoming a city councilor and really is going to stay in place as long as I can muster the votes by my fellow councilors to let it on the books because we do have sewer interceptors that overflow and until those are fixed I would like to have just a little bit more oversight on, on those. But the city has made some significant strides in replacing the sewer interceptors that were the first reason that we, that we instituted the sewer moratorium in Ward 6. And I believe that, um, so what they're here to talk about today is I think that um, Father Bills and Main Street and House is going to give you a little um, overview of what the project is. And um, Mr. Thorson and Mr. Rowley are here to talk to you uh, about the sewer hookups from the standpoint from whatever you, standpoint you want to talk about them, but initially from my perspective, from the standpoint of the sewer interceptors in that area and how these, um, this additional development might, um, might affect the city's uh, sewer system. So after Mr. Um, Thorson and Mr. Rowley um, say what, you know, what they would like to say, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the development <coughs> after they're done talking about the sewer in that area. Thank you, Mr. Thorsten, Commissioner Thorsten, for being here. And if you could just comment on um, if the city can handle the capacity from the proposed development and whatever else you'd like to comment uh, on. We've, we've checked. Um, a good evening. Uh, thank you, Councilor DeBois. We've uh, checked. Uh, Larry and I both have looked into this, and we feel very strongly that the amount of uh, uh, sewer usage that is proposed by this uh, project uh, will not impact the uh, current system. Uh, especially in light of all the upgrades that have been done in the recent uh, in the recent past. I'll just leave it open to my fellow councilors, and then before Mr. Yeswinski comes up, I'd just like to comment and give him a little bit of an introduction, if that's okay. Any other questions, for Commissioner Thorson? Councilor Monahan. Yes, good evening. Could you just clarify? I mean, I've heard. I know Councilor Dubois says it still needs a uh, the moratorium in Ward Six. And if you're, <clears throat> and what is it, the interceptors you're talking about? Yes. Uh, is there this issue with the interceptors still that need to be looked into? And why are we looking into this? Or? 
Well, the, the interceptors themselves, um, I don't think were always the problem, but remember they were replaced um, and repaired several years ago, correct? I don't exactly know how many years ago, but they, they, have, been in, they have been repaired and, and or replaced in that area. Um, and it's probably more than 10 years ago now because it was before my time. So uh, we feel that they're in very good shape right now, so there shouldn't be an issue there. So there's no issue with this? Um, as, far as, the, as far as this project goes, I, I see no issue with the project as, as uh, proposed to us. The plans that we have seen as far as, as, far as the water sewer uh, hookups and the water sewer quantity that they are going to produce, the, the water they're going to use and the sewer they're going to produce, we don't feel will uh, overtax or overstress the system as we have it currently configured. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Lund. I wouldn't let him go. So. Any other questions, Commissioner Thorson? Uh, thank you. Um, okay. And just so the councilors know, the moratorium is not what's on the agenda tonight. Neither really is the proposal for the. Uh, you know, uh, we'll let these people speak for a few minutes, but uh, it's really not the agenda item tonight either. So, uh, if they want to come up and give us a very brief description of the project. Uh, if there's no objection, um, no, no. you can uh, maybe give us a brief introduce yourselves, but again, this is not what's, what's on the agenda. So please make it very brief. Thank you. Um, my name is John Yaswinski, the CEO and President of Father Bills in Mainspring. I have with us here our civil engineer, Mike Joyce, who can answer any questions as he's the one that's been going through the technical review in the city of Brockton with the different uh, planning departments. Uh, very quickly is that we're proposing to create a 22 units of supportive housing. Uh, the 20 unit building that you'll see here very quickly is modeled after uh, our residences at 26 Spring Street that many people might know of, which is a home, it's 32 efficiency apartments on Spring Street in Brockton. It's a home for uh, veterans and um, formerly homeless, disabled people. This new building will consist of a 20 studio apartment appropriately sized for individual tenancies and the uh, supportive housing units will be targeted for 10 United States veterans and nine other disabled individuals with a live-in resident manager. Um, and then we will also have um, a uh, two additional two bedroom units for families in a separate house in what would be an adjacent subdivided lot. So um, we'll be providing community space educational programs here, uh, but it is exactly the same model that we've developed and it's been, we feel very successful in the city of Brockton over at our residences at Spring Street that have been up for now almost four years. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Dubois. So my only question, so I, both Councilor McMillan and I toured uh, the Spring Street uh, efficiencies, and if my fellow councilors haven't toured those yet, I suggest that you do. They're pretty nice. Each floor is security code pass, so you can't get on that floor unless you live on that floor. And when you go inside the efficiencies, I don't know how big everyone's home is, but my house is 900 square feet, so I live in a small house with my husband. It's small. We knew it was small when we bought it, and it has a big yard, so we're very happy there. These efficiencies are around, what, 385 square feet? somewhere around there and so when you go in there there's room for a bedroom a couch television there's a little cooking area where you can have a refrigerator and it comes down to this for me if you hit hard times and you have nowhere else to live why not live in a place that provides you some dignity it's clean it's nice there's wraparound services um, provided um, it's hard to say no to a project like this because it's being run by a reputable um, agency it's not a fly-by-night lodging house there's no lodging house permit connected to this facility so if for some reason uh, farther bills and mainspring house went kaput I believe the financing is through the state so it would have to be handed over to another state-run agency of the the same caliber and um, I believe that they're committing to at least 50 percent veterans though it could the 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 percentage could be much higher right John it's just that you ha that's just the minimum that we're requiring but there's a lot of homelessness in the city and I think that what this does it isn't just you're giving someone a bed for a night you're giving them housing that they can then translate into a job and some self self-respect 
Um, so I, I'm in support of this. Uh, so far, I have not spoken with any of my residents that are opposed to this. John and I are going to be walking um, the street that is parallel and this street uh, within the next couple of weeks to talk to the residents and knocking on their doors. But we've had two community meetings about this, and no one from the Ward 6 area has come in opposition. Some people in the Business Association are not so happy about this project, and others are. I would say the majority of them are not. Um, I've had multiple meetings with them as well and right now it's a vacant lot um, what it could become just so we all know when it was the Catholic Charities um, in, across the street this was the lot for the Catholic Charities there was a drug rehab in there a lockdown facility in that tall building and a lot of other unsavory, like if you would think unsavory, slightly unsavory things. Um, so I see this as an improvement. The only issue I have is that I have not seen this plan since it's come through um, the city's plan review, and it seems like a lot of the green space that was to the left of it is now paved. And I wonder what effect that's going to have for runoff um, and just the happiness of the neighborhood, but right now it's just a paved lot. So I think it will be an improvement, and that's why I'm supporting the project, and I hope that my fellow councillors do as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Moynihan. Good evening. Give me John. <clears throat> well, I will say that the uh, veterans housing that we have or on Spring Street is uh, they are good size um, uh, units. They are kept clean, and I don't think we've had any issues there in the past. <clears throat> How long has it been there now? Three years? Yeah, going on four years. Yeah. Okay, and I understand that, <clears throat> of course, um, not so much on this project, but I'm more worried about across the street. I, and my um, thought is that when you're saying mostly veteran housing, now we're saying 50%, I'm thinking it's more, it should be around 80 or 90%. And I think originally we were, we were talking about this, from what I understand, it was supposed to be all veterans housing. Was it? How much was it? It... I believe, you know, when we first started talking about the phases, we were talking about both parcels. So the numbers did change as we were communicating with the state. But there was a project was never about having all veterans. What we're trying to do here is stick with the model that worked at Spring Street. So we're addressing two issues. First is we're addressing a priority to help our fellow veterans. That, you know, the city of Brockton is very patriotic. We have a lot of people returning back from the military that are ending up at Mainspring. Just last year, Father Bill's in Mainspring. Mainspring House served over 150 veterans struggling with homelessness. So we're trying to be that, have that priority. The second is the city of Brockton, under the last two administrations, has had a 10-year plan to address chronic homelessness, our most disabled people. And so we're trying to also you know, work on having people that have severe disabilities to have appropriate housing also. So we don't need places like Mainspring House. Uh, so we're trying to address two issues here, and we're going with the model that's really worked, and we hope that everybody's comfortable with as it, it's been a, a, a success. And, and now what's the ratio of veterans to disabled or whatever at, in, at Main, I mean, I mean, Spring Street? 15, to 15 veterans, 16 disabled, homeless, okay. formerly homeless. All right, and, and just to, in the future now, you've also got the old Fannif Hospital or Catholic Charities across the street. Are we looking at more SROs in there? What are we looking at going across the street? Um, we are focused on this project right now. We have not had any um, further discussions from our initial proposal, which we decided to pull back. So what, what I've said to Michelle and, and what I've said, said to Chris is that we'd like to get this project done and then start working with the community about what that project, what that parcel potentially could be. Uh, but you have any, okay. Basically, I mean, I'm for what you're doing right now as far as helping our veterans are stable, but again, homelessness, we keep drawing more and more people from other towns into Broughton, and it's obviously I have an issue with Perkins Park and a few other things that they're all over, the, not, well, you know, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but I mean, they're hanging out there, whatever, and I think if we're going to be doing this project, which really is a nice building, like I said, it's Spring Street, no issues, but I just don't want to see more and more coming into the city, especially with that project across the street, hopefully. But, you know, we've developed over 350 units of housing, and we don't have more than, 50, you know, 32 units is our only project base for individuals in the city of Brockton. Um, so we've developed 30 units down in Plymouth because we don't want people in Plymouth that are struggling in that area to come up to Brockton. We're doing our best also to address those issues. Um, where the majority of those units are not necessarily in the city of Brockton. We've done it more of a scattered site approach, and we're going to continue to be committed to that. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilors? A motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded to recommend the uh, sewer connection favorably. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Councilors. Any other business? We're adjourned. <laughs>